Hey there, Nick Jantakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over how to drastically reduce the time it takes for Docker Compose to recreate containers if you happen to be referencing a .env file. Now, I just wanna make a disclaimer here that you might not be affected by this, but I was. You know, I've been using Docker since 2015, and I just made this change very recently that reduced the time it takes for my applications to start up from uh, six seconds down to three seconds, so a really big improvement. And again, this is only related to when you make ENV changes. Now, I've done a video in the past that went over how Docker Compose up works, Basically, you know, if you run a Docker Compose up, it is smart enough to recreate containers that need to be recreated based on, you know, potentially images changing as well as ENV files changing. And uh, by the way, this example app that we're going to go over, it is available on GitHub over here. And if you'd rather look at examples for Django Rails, Node, or Phoenix, you can just replace the flask here in the URL and go to those. They all use the uh, all the examples. And by the way, also a side note, I pushed up a change that now all of these projects support Docker Compose v1 and v2. Unrelated to the video, but just wanted to point that one out. But uh, yeah, let me run a Docker Compose, and I am using Docker Compose v2, by the way, here. That's why I have a space between Docker Compose instead of a dash. But let's run this project here. This is the first time I'm running the project here. In other words, like it wasn't running beforehand. And you know, now the whole project is up and running here. And if I go to my browser, reload a couple times, we can see that the example app is running. Now, let's say that you want to make an environment variable change to this project. You know, this could be your application, doesn't necessarily need to be this one. And I go into here, let's say, and you know, maybe I add a new, uh, I don't know, like a Stripe key or whatever they name it. And then the value there would be something like ABC123. And if I go to the other window here, I can run a Docker Compose up D. You know, I don't need to stop things and down things. That's what that other video was focused on. But if I do this, then Docker Compose is smart enough to only recreate the containers that need to be created. So in this case, you can see for Redis and Postgres that they're already running and zero time was spent here recreating them. However, the other containers like the web and the worker, and I also have uh, ES build and tailwind running in development here, uh, they got recreated because they all referenced the ENV file. But in production, typically the JS and CSS wouldn't be running. But in any ways, uh, actually, let me rerun this one with the time command and let me go back here and just you know add something else to this file. And I'll just time it here and we can just see the all in final time here. Let's see. Okay, it is running, running, running. We can see it takes roughly five seconds, right, to recreate everything. And you know that's because I'm recording a video now, but before it actually ran in three and a half seconds, pretty big difference here. Um, but this is with the optimization in place already. So check this out. If I go to my compose file, um, what I'm doing now is for Redis one, uh, well, previously I should have showed maybe the before state. The before state, I had this env file property, which by the way, this is set up to run on the web and worker containers, but I had this exact property here defined for Redis. And let me actually do it just so we can see the before and after here. So if I take that, bring that down here um, for Redis and drop that in, then also need to indent that. And if I do it again over here and drop that in, and then I'll also just comment out all of that just for now then I will need to do a Docker Compose down. We don't need to really time it, but time is already there, so why not? Then I'll uh, up this one for the first time here. And remember, previously it took five seconds, right? Um, but now if I go here and go to back to the env file, you know, make another change to that one, and we do an update here, you know, we would theoretically think that this will take longer now. Why? Because now it needs to recreate Redis and Postgres here. We can see six seconds. Now, it's funny, you know, when I was not recording this video, uh, I did it five times in a row for both, and it really went from a three and a half second to a six second difference. So it was roughly two times uh, difference there. But we can see here though, I know the real takeaway is that Redis and Postgres got recreated. Why? Because, you know, in the compose file now, they're referencing that. So since this container has that reference there, when that changes the env file, then compose is like, oh, okay, cool. Well, Postgres and Redis both reference that file. I need to go and recreate those containers. But really, you know, chances are you don't really necessarily need to be referencing your env file in these containers here because you're not necessarily using those environment variables in the actual running container. Now with Redis, yeah, there's absolutely no re references to any of the env values. Now for Postgres, it's a little bit different. Um, you know, just to run the Postgres container, you need to define at least the Postgres user and the password you know, this is going to set up the initial uh, database, initial user, initial password. You can see here, database is optional if you want to define it here. But yeah, I mean, I've gone over this pattern in the past in my Docker Compose best practices video from DockerCon last year, but Docker Compose supports variable interpolation on a .env file. So, you know, you can just use the environment property instead of env file, like we're doing up here for the web and worker. And now we can just put in whatever environment variables that this 
uh, container specifically needs, which in this case is just Postgres user and password. And now using variable interpolation, it is gonna go read these from the env file, which I do have down here uh, defined. And I had these defined before here, but yeah, I just wanted to show them in video just so you can see exactly how that works end to end. So now, you know, without that env file reference in these containers, uh, we can get the sped up approach where it doesn't need to get recreated if your env file changes, because let's be real now, most of the time this env file changing, it's going to be due to, you know, you as an application developer needing to, you know, add a Stripe key, add a, a transactional email service key or whatever environment variables that your application needs. No need to restart these containers every time. And, you know, in production, if you're doing a single server deploy with Docker Compose, which is something I've been doing uh, for a really long time now, I think it's great. You know, that is a very nice difference to have, uh, you know, three seconds of downtime instead of six because you're not needless, needlessly recreating these containers here. So it's a little bit less dangerous, right? They just don't need to be recreated and stopped and started and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know in the comments below if you are going to be using this pattern or if you've been using this pattern for a long time, because I'm honestly pretty surprised I've been using Docker and Docker Compose for a really long time, right? Since 2015-ish, um, actually technically late 2014. But yeah, in all that time, I still have never made that optimization here to my Compose file, not until very recently. And, and you know, I guess in my defense, in a lot of cases, I have deployed services where Postgres and Redis are being managed at the cloud hosting environment. You know, I'm not necessarily running them in my Docker Compose file, but there are some projects where I was doing that. And uh, yeah, I was actually doing some client work and I ran into this and I figured like, whoa, wait, wouldn't it be nice if we didn't have to do that? And uh, there we go. And that's where we're at. So yeah, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.